Greetings, my name is Lori. When I first started dating my husband George, he was upfront about his close friendship with Patricia. He explained, Lori, Patricia holds a special place in my life. I want to be transparent with you because she means a lot to me. We even had a brief romantic relationship. At the time, I was unaware of their past as a couple. Curious, I asked him why they broke up. He told me, She moved abroad for a job opportunity, and we both agreed that a long-distance relationship wasn't feasible for us. I then questioned if he still had feelings for her, given their frequent conversations. George reassured me, Yes, I talk to her often, but only as friends. My romantic feelings for her are in the past, and I hope you can be comfortable with our friendship. Despite his assurances, I later felt deceived. Deep down, George still harbored feelings for Patricia. He had chosen to be with me under the belief that Patricia wouldn't return. Our marriage on the surface seemed successful. We enjoyed a strong, enviable connection, and George's mother, Nicole, cherished me as the daughter she never had. She often expressed her joy, saying, I always wanted a daughter, Lori. I believe God answered my prayers by sending you to be my future daughter-in-law. I'm so happy my son found such a wonderful woman. However, the topic of Patricia was a complex one. When I mentioned how George spoke highly of Patricia, Nicole's tone shifted. She confided, I'm not fond of Patricia, and although I have no proof, I suspect there might still be something between her and George. But don't worry, George has assured me of his love for you and sees Patricia merely as a friend. While I wanted to trust George as much as Nicole did, she couldn't help but express her fears based on her own past experiences, recalling, His father cheated on me and left. I'm just afraid George might end up hurting you as well. I didn't want the same heartache for you, dear. Yes, I initially trusted George over his mom, and in hindsight, it was a mistake. I was overly confident in our relationship. There were hardly any red flags, making me feel secure enough to marry George. However, things started getting odd right after our wedding, Patricia couldn't attend as she was abroad, but she called during our reception, crying, which led George to step away to comfort her. It bothered me deeply, yet I chose to remain silent. After getting married, we moved into a house that George had inherited from his grandfather. He had renovated it beautifully, and I added some touches to make it feel more like a home. We began our life together there, but soon enough, The reality of living with George day in and day out showed me just how close he still was to Patricia. They would talk incessantly on the phone, and it eventually became too much for me. One day, I expressed my growing unease. George, you're spending a lot of time on the phone with Patricia. It's planning doubts in my mind. We need to set some boundaries, I suggested. His response was dismissive and firm. That will never happen, Lori. I've always told you Patricia is important to me. You married me knowing this. You have no grounds to complain now. But you never clarified just how deep your connection with her was. You assured me your feelings for her were in the past, but your actions are telling a different story, I countered. George's retort was sharp. Don't be ridiculous, Lori. You have no right to criticize me like this. I will talk to Patricia as much as I want. It's none of your business. Besides, Patricia is moving back to our city permanently. You better brace yourself because there will be more interactions like this. Oh, and I also secured her a job at my workplace so she will be around even more. I was stunned. Not only was Patricia returning to our city, but she was also about to become George's colleague. No wonder he had seemed distant lately. Patricia wasn't even back yet, and I could already feel George withdrawing from me, caught up in anticipation of her return. I began having terrifying dreams about what might happen when Patricia returned to our city, and unfortunately, my fears soon became a reality. Patricia moved back, 
found an inexpensive apartment nearby, and even started working at George's company. Now, with them spending a lot of time together both at work and socially, my initial paranoia seemed justified. One day, I bumped into Patricia at the grocery store. With a smirk, she approached me and said, Hey, you must be the one George married in my place. He was so desperate for some female company, he wouldn't have chosen you otherwise. You mean nothing. Shocked by her rudeness during our very first meeting, I responded, What are you talking about, Patricia? How can you say such things? Regardless of what you think, I am George's wife. He married me because he loves me. Patricia scoffed. You're seriously deluded, Lori. He married you because I wasn't here. But now that I'm back, just watch. It won't be long before George comes running back to me. Her words were like a slap in the face, revealing her true intentions. Yet despite this ominous encounter, I clung to my trust in George, believing in our love and his commitment to me. However, everything changed when George sat me down one evening with unsettling news. Lori, I think you should know that Patricia is moving in with us tomorrow. I've already brought some of her stuff over while you were at work. Stunned, I asked. Are you joking, George? Why is she moving in with us? You didn't even think to consult me on this decision. I'm your wife. We're supposed to discuss these things. George's reply was cold and dismissive. This is my house, Lori. I can bring anyone I want into it. You don't own the place, so you don't get a say. Patricia's been having some financial troubles, so she can't afford her rent. We'll cover her expenses until she's back on her feet. Frustrated and hurt, I pressed. And what if I don't agree with this? What happens then? George was unyielding. You don't get a say in this. She will be here, and that's final if you cause any trouble. His words trailed off, but the implication was clear. This decision was made, and my feelings about it were irrelevant. George's stark warning came to fruition the very next day when Patricia moved into our house. I felt powerless to change the situation, and as time went on, I increasingly felt like an outsider in my own home. George and Patricia were constantly together, their closeness blatant and unapologetic. Whenever I attempted to address the issue with George, our conversations turned into arguments and nothing would change. As months slipped by, Patricia showed no signs of leaving and George dismissed any talks of her moving out. My marriage felt redundant. It was as if George no longer needed me. Then one day, Patricia decided to reveal the true extent of her intrusion into my marriage. She sent me screenshots of conversations with George, bluntly titled, I got your man, Lori. Now you are the other woman. Divorce is coming. The text confirmed they were having an affair, mocking me and even discussing their hookups during my work trips. George's text to Patricia professed his love for her. Shocked and devastated by Patricia's message, I was left reeling. The betrayal was overwhelming, plunging me into a state of utter despair. I cried uncontrollably for hours until they both returned home. When they walked through the door, I couldn't hold back my anger and hurt any longer. Confronting them, I exclaimed, I know about your affair. How could you do this to me, George? You invited this homewrecker into our lives and ruined our marriage. George defensively retorted, How dare you speak about Patricia that way? She is innocent and kind. You've had issues with her from the start. Yes, I've had issues because it was clear she intended to take you away from me. And it looks like she succeeded, I replied. She can't stay here any longer, George. If you care about our marriage at all, she needs to leave. Amidst the heated exchange, Patricia dramatically exclaimed, I'm so sorry for causing trouble. I'll leave. I don't have anywhere to go and I'd rather sleep on the streets than endure Lori's insults any longer. With that, she began to sob loudly, clutching her chest as if on the verge of a panic attack. George immediately went to her, holding her tightly in a comforting embrace, then shot me a glare full of disdain as he tried to soothe her. The scene before me was a clear indicator of where his priorities lay. 
further cementing the painful realization of the betrayal and loss within my own home. I was completely shocked and on the verge of tears myself when George abruptly intervened. Patricia, don't cry, dear. You're not going anywhere. This house belongs solely to me, so Lori can't kick you out, and I certainly won't. You don't need to worry. His words ignited a fury in me. You're choosing to keep your mistress and kick me out? George, I might love you, but I have my limits. You need to stop making false promises to her and focus on our marriage. George was resolute. I'm not making false promises. Patricia is staying, and it's you who will leave. You've been cruel to her, insisting she leave even though she has nowhere to go. I can't live with someone so heartless. You've upset Patricia enough. Leave the house immediately and give us some space. Are you serious? You're kicking me out instead of her? You're choosing Patricia over your wife? I asked, incredulous. Yes, I want you out. You know you'll just come back anyway because you're shameless. You're nothing but a spoiled princess. You should be grateful I didn't kick you out sooner. People as greedy as you deserve to be on the streets. Hearing George's harsh words was disorienting. It didn't matter whether he was joking or not. The harsh reality was that he had chosen Patricia over me, clearly defining where I stood. All the while, Patricia stood there smirking at me, clearly pleased with the turn of events. At that moment, I made a silent vow to myself. Responding to George, I said firmly, Yes, I'll return, but when I do, things will be drastically different. Mark my words, George, this isn't the end. You will face consequences, and so will Patricia. How dare you threaten us? See, George, I always told you she was a gold digger, trying to force you to keep her in your house, Patricia interjected, trying to provoke George against me. You have some nerve saying you'll come back. I always knew you were a greedy and shameless woman, only with me for money. Do you want to come back? Fine. I'll see how you ever step foot in this house again. George scoffed, choosing to preserve my dignity and not dignify their remarks with a response. I began to pack my belongings. I had plans. This was merely the start of my resolve. I left the house without engaging further, even as George comforted a sobbing Patricia who lamented over being insulted. As I walked away, I knew that the end of my marriage was not the end of my story, but the beginning of my resurgence. After George's harsh dismissal, I left our home and headed straight to Nicole's house. When she opened the door and saw me standing there with my belongings, her expression shifted to one of shock. Oh my God, Lori, what happened? Why do you have your stuff with you? Come in, sit down, and tell me everything. Inside, I explained, Nicole, George kicked me out. He told me to leave, and I didn't know where else to go, so I came here. What? George kicked you out? But why? This doesn't make any sense, Nicole responded, clearly bewildered by the news. I recounted the entire ordeal, how Patricia had returned and the subsequent upheaval in my marriage. Nicole was visibly shocked and became increasingly angry as I detailed the events. I can't believe he did this to his wife. What kind of son have I raised? I am ashamed, she lamented. No, Nicole, please don't blame yourself, I reassured her. You've done everything you could. You even scolded George for being a neglectful husband. This isn't your fault. It seems he's just following in his cheating father's footsteps. Do you have any concrete evidence of their cheating? Nicole asked, her tone serious. Yes, I have solid proof, I replied. I found texts on George's phone, and Patricia foolishly sent me some texts between them. I guess she was trying to upset me or make me jealous. The audacity of that woman, she's a home wrecker. My son doesn't know what he's lost, Nicole exclaimed. Don't worry, Nicole, he will find out soon enough. As for Patricia, I have some plans in mind. I just need your support. Can I count on you not to help them in any way? I asked, seeking her commitment. Yes, Lori, there is no way I'm going to support them. I didn't raise a cheater. As of today, I have no son. You have my full support. Go nuclear, I don't care. 
Nicole assured me. With Nicole's support, I felt empowered to take action. I carefully compiled all the screenshots and kept them secured in a folder. The next day, I met with a lawyer to discuss everything. Together, we reviewed the legalities of my situation and he helped me devise a robust plan for my next steps. I decided to file for divorce and instructed my lawyer to serve George the papers at his office in front of his colleagues. Naturally, this public spectacle raised many questions among his peers, sparking widespread curiosity about the reasons behind our sudden and dramatic split. After the divorce papers were served, my lawyer called to inform me that everything was set for the next phase of my plan. Seizing the moment, I sent a well-detailed email to George and Patricia's HR department, exposing their affair and attaching the incriminating screenshots as proof. A colleague of George's, who kept me updated, told me that the two were promptly called into a serious meeting. The office buzzed with the news of their misconduct. Shortly after the meeting, an infuriated George called me. What the hell is wrong with you, Lori? You told HR about me and Patricia. Are you insane? You've cost us our jobs. Patricia and I are unemployed because of you. Be careful, George, I cautioned him. This conversation is being recorded. Don't be too harsh or I might sue you for verbal abuse. I hope you received the divorce papers. You have eight months to sign them and hand them over. I'm not signing those papers. Even if I do, I will fight for alimony. I'll take you to the cleaners, he blustered. You might want to rethink that, George, I replied calmly. Have you forgotten that in our state, cheating is considered grounds for fault in a divorce? You won't get a cent from me. You have no proof of my relationship with Patricia. You're just bluffing. You can't prove anything in court, George retorted. Is that so? Well, why don't you check your email? I've sent you all the proof I have. You should tell your mistress not to be so careless next time. She sent some quite revealing screenshots that gave me all the ammunition I needed. I informed him. Frustrated and defeated, George ended the call abruptly, threatening to destroy me in court. However, as the months rolled on, Neither legal threats nor their financial plans bore fruit. George and Patricia plunged into a severe financial crisis. With Nicole cutting ties with him, George found himself without any support. Both remained unemployed, burdened further by legal fees. Patricia, who had lived extravagantly, believing George would always support her, found herself in a dire situation. Her reckless spending on luxuries backfired spectacularly. She had drastically underestimated the consequences of their actions and was unprepared for the harsh reality that soon engulfed her. After enduring the betrayal and fallout from George and Patricia's actions, I decided to take legal steps to hold Patricia accountable for alienating my affection from George. Supported by my lawyer's advice, I filed a lawsuit against her which took her by surprise and left her distraught. During this time, Nicole kept me updated about George's dire financial situation. She told me George had called her in tears. He was struggling financially and could not secure a stable job. Meanwhile, Patricia refused to work, relying entirely on George to bear the financial burden, which now included hefty legal fees. Overwhelmed and desperate, George even approached Nicole for financial help, but she firmly refused. Ultimately, George's financial strain forced him to make the difficult decision to sell his house. When I noticed the listing on a real estate agent's website, I seized the opportunity to enact my final act of retribution. I promptly contacted the agent, expressing my interest and readiness to purchase the house at a favorable price. We arranged a meeting to finalize the sale, but George was unaware of who the buyer was. At the meeting, George's shock was palpable when he realized I was the prospective buyer. What the hell are you doing here, Lori? Why are you with my agent? He demanded. I've come back to your house as I promised, but this time as the buyer, I replied calmly. 
No, I won't sell you my house. That's impossible. I won't sell my precious house to someone who destroyed my life, George protested vehemently. You'd be foolish not to, George, I countered. You're out of money, and even your lawyer is complaining about unpaid fees. You won't be able to support yourself, much less Patricia. You won't find a better offer than mine. Think about it. After much deliberation and ongoing pressure from his real estate agent and persistent calls from his lawyer, during our meeting, George finally capitulated. He signed the papers, and the house that he once kicked me out of became mine. Today, I live there permanently. As for what happened to George and Patricia afterward, they eventually broke up. Once I was no longer in the picture, tensions escalated between them. Patricia desired a traditional setup where George would be the sole breadwinner, but George, who had always been tight with money, refused to support her financially. Their relationship deteriorated further until George fed up, kicked her out after a heated argument. Ironically, even after the divorce was finalized, George tried to reconcile with me, but it was far too late for any chance of rekindling our relationship. The damage had been done and my life had moved on without him. George came to me, pleading for forgiveness and begging for another chance to make things right. I firmly told him that he had exhausted his chances already. There was no possibility of us getting back together. Now, he leads a lonely life, shunned by Nicole and his friends who no longer speak to him. Despite everything, Nicole and I have maintained a strong bond. She visits me often at my house, which has become a place of healing and new beginnings for both of us. I've also started to dip my toes into the dating scene again. Nothing serious has come of it yet, but I'm optimistic. I hope to eventually find someone who will cherish and love me as I truly deserve. Until then, keep Nicole and me in your thoughts and prayers.